Ladies and gentlemen, this is Internet Personality Vangelis, here with a review of the Parallax G3 trailer by Fans Project. Will you join me in saluting the legend? I got this from Soul of Anime, a cool import shop in Richmond, BC. One thing I want to show you right off the bat is that there's a secret feature on this package, because this part is perforated so you can remove it and reveal your very own Henke or Classics Prime. There's room in the tray for them, and that's a really cool touch. Display-wise, it's fantastic. There are also some bits on the top here, uh, making for just a really effective packaging display. I like how you can see more or less everything you get inside, and you have some nice shiny photography on the back. However, the package is really the boring part. There's one thing I want to show you on the inner tray, so I'm going to use some magic and point out that the tray is actually multifaceted and extremely wobbly on its own. All the accessories come in this upper piece, and the inner piece has a really cool bit of sculpted add-on, which just adds to the amount of uh, attention to detail that is in every ounce of the G3 trailer, which is something that continues to surprise and impress me with a lot of different fans' companies, namely this G3 trailer plaque there. Anyway, I've bored you with this long enough, so let's unpack this baby! There's a fair bit of preparation to the toy that made it a bit more fun for the modeler in me. You've got to carefully clip the bonus weapons from their frames, peel the protective adhesive from the stealth panels, and apply the stickers. Most notably, the 12 sticker number 8s greatly benefit from a little bit of toothpick TLC, as they can hug over the sculpted details beneath them quite well. The G3 trailer has a really beautiful silver finish over all the grey pieces, and it just shines under the lights. I use Henke Convoy here to kind of accent that chromativity, although this is nowhere near as, uh, in my opinion, kind of cheesy looking. It's a lot more natural. The uh, weight of the trailer makes it follow this turning axis really nicely, and the axis works this well because it's just a very well-cut circular port that fits over Convoy's hitch and it means that he's got a lot of free movement here. Also, uh, the wheels back here are actually paired. There's two tires per wheel, and they are separate pieces, which is really impressive. Now, this trailer can do a couple things with its cousin, the Commander trailer. This is the TFCon powered Commander version. They look pretty neat driving around next to each other, but the true gimmick lies underneath the G3's chassis. Beneath here, there's a fold-out connector which allows for interaction with the commander set. All you've got to do is flip the bumper up and fold the wheels out. What really impressed me is that there is some level of transformation to this, which is another thing I wasn't expecting. This uses a uh, very cool customized connector, and when attached to the commander armor, the gap that would have been left behind by the missing prime or convoy is actually filled in really nicely by a fold-up kind of barricade deal. And now you've got this monstrous, monstrous thing. It's got two full turning axes, and as I've said before, this uh, blue barrier thing actually covers the gap with like detail. There's actually some ridged stuff in there. Unfortunately, there's one design flaw which has been brought up. Now, this isn't actually something that annoys me that much, but it's a valid complaint. The way that this whole setup works, this trailer is kind of enormous. Now, it was like that on the original G1 toy, and I think that's the basis. However, it also means that this wind vane on the Classics or Henke Prime convoy is made completely useless as it deflects wind up into a giant wall. However, that aside, there's a few other little features on the trailer itself just in this mode. Once you fold this thing back in, which by the way is very easy, and it does clip in place pretty well on the bottom once you get it lined up. The back of the trailer folds open pretty interestingly with a pair of doors and a ramp. Uh, everything on this just feels really solid and it doesn't feel at all like it's fragile, which is the main thing I wanted out of a pricey piece like this. Also, this can carry Classics cars pretty well. Sadly, you can only really fit one inside without stacking, although I have fit Hound and Bumblebee in there if I pile them up a little bit. Also, there's another little gimmick that I'll show you in full later, but let's use that to reveal our little buddy... Roller! This roller is of a very similar quality to the rest of the trailer. 
He's got the uh, double tire setups here, and oddly enough, has several points of movement. He can extend like this um, and transform in order to hold the TFCon exclusive Energon lunchbox. I thought that was a really cool little touch and a nice throwback to earlier pieces. There's a lot of good recursion in this between this feature and the hitch for the commander armor. However, something a little more accessible to people who don't have the TFCon edition of the powered commander would be that you can also mount either of Prime's guns on this little guy, thanks to this kind of uh, swiveling connection port here. Um, this one doesn't fit in quite as well, I find, as the red one, mostly because the red one doesn't have as much clearance issues on the bottom, and that means you can just, you know, move it around however you like, so Roller can be quite heavily armed, all things considered. Um, next, let's move along to the things this trailer can do without the Prime. On its own, the trailer has the classic Prime features from the old G1 toy. Aside from the opening door, you've also got the flip-out base mode. Now, this thing is kind of dauntingly sized, but uh, I really like the profile it lends once you've opened it up. And of course, the nice shiny metal silver here doesn't really uh, do much to dissuade that awe factor. <laughs> The first thing I'll show you is how this roller mechanism works. You push him in, and it locks in super solid. And then the trailer hitch down here, you pull back like a trigger, and pow! Roller fires off with quite a bit of force. And I just really like how solid and chunky the mechanism feels in every good way. It's also a decent way to keep him held in there in trailer mode, but uh, it's not too reliable. For stability, there's a couple of fold-out things here on the bottom. Um, also, this thing can fold in and out quite easily, and is a great way to keep it standing when the truck is not around to carry it. There's also a couple functions here on the back with this kind of radar repair bay tower cannon deal. First off, if you wanted to repair things, you can transform it into its uh, kind of medic mode. Um, the arms that fold out took me a little while to figure out how to orient correctly, but I do like the really tight ratcheting joints here. Uh, these are just ball joints, but they're also similarly solid, and don't feel like they're going to get loose anytime soon. And I like that you can open and close the little grabber things. Really, it's just got a lot of uh, extra movement and ability that I wasn't expecting. So if you want to wheel in someone for repairs, you can just roll Hound in and have the repair bay drone look over him. Or if it's really tired of him bringing things into the base, you can actually just have it grab hold of his windshields and tear his gun off and all kinds of fun things like that and then tear him to shreds. For the gun mode, in a bit of an unexpected twist, we've got a little bit of Automorph. And uh, this thing also gets a little bit taller. And then, just a, another touch that wasn't necessary at all, you get a blast shield. Prime can also man this gun primarily because the sides of the repair arms have these little silver pegs and those can peg into the holes on the inside of Prime's arms which was, uh, yet again, a really nice little touch. Sadly, though, this feature is also a little hard to use, because once you've managed to get Prime pegged in, even from a horrible angle like what I'm standing at, um, it's really the best he can do. There's, you can pull his legs up and over all this stuff here and have him kind of sit halfways inside the trailer. I think it's a valiant effort, but um, having Prime man the cannon just doesn't really work out as well as I think one would have hoped. He looks a little bit like he's behind the wheel of, of something that he doesn't quite understand, <laughs> and uh, it, it just doesn't really pull it off all that well. It is a solid connection on his arms, and that is quite impressive, but uh, that's a feature of this trailer that didn't really hit it off for me. It's no real problem, though, as this thing really looks cool as a drone by itself. Um, you can also fold out a little optic scope on the bottom here, which uh, is something I didn't even notice for the longest time, and uh, it's not the most vibrantly detailed little addition to the sculpt, but it's a nice touch nonetheless. Um, also, there's a great sticker on the back here with a firing sight, so if you do have Prime manning this thing, at least you can just have him stare right into the screen as he tries to figure out how to work this crazy doohickey. Hound, once I get this crazy doohickey figured out, your ass is green grass salad! Haha, <laughs> that's a great joke, Prime! Sure is a funny training exercise, though. Ha ha ha! 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 
Aside from this rather offense-based mode, there's also a repair bay mode that this thing can turn into by standing up like the original classic toy. Whether or not this repair bay mode works for you really depends on what you thought of the original 80s version. As far as an update to that, I think it does a great job. Also, if you don't want to have Prime in here, you can always swap him out for... Ye Old Powered Commander. This guy doesn't fit in quite as easily, but once he's in there, this actually feels like it makes more sense to me. As he doesn't seem quite so short in comparison to all that stuff around him. Another interesting detail to point out is the weapon storage. Now, aside from the uh, bonus weapons in there, you can also peg in Prime's wind vane, and there's a really cool custom design clip for his smokestack gun. Now, all these features aside, there's one last surprise to the G3 trailer, and it's the one that was revealed to us last. What is it? Let's take a look. To engage the stealth mode, it's pretty cool, but you do have to do something a little annoying to start it off. You've got to pop the trailer open. This does give me a chance to show you how to fit Hound and Bumblebee inside, which is a plus, but once you've done this, you have to pop these trap doors open. Unfortunately, I haven't figured out a way to do this without opening the trailer up like that, but it's really not a huge downside, because once you've got that done, you just yank down, and boom, stealth mode has begun. This is a really cool idea, which is meant to explain how the trailer would disappear back in the G1 series, and I think it does a great job of it. Um, the mirror paneling on here is sadly a huge fingerprint magnet, but the instructions do say it can be cleaned with an eyeglass cloth, which is a nice plus. And really, if you can get a really good surface to put this down on, like a good background, a good symmetrical floor, it really looks cool. Now. If this feature works for you, you're going to love this trailer, because this is a big part of what you're paying for, I think. If this feature does not work for you at all, then sadly I've got to say that the G3 trailer might be a little underwhelming for its price, because this is a big, big, cool gimmick of it. I love this myself, but if you don't like this, I would try to get a look at one in person before making the purchase. That said, I just, I, I love this idea. Um, if you put this at the right angle, it really can start looking just like this empty frame of gray strips, and uh, I just I just enjoy it a lot. Now, this does kind of <laughs> lend itself well to characters like Mirage, who can try to be stealthy in their own special way. Baffled yet? Can't see anything, can you? Just two perfectly invisible objects, there's nothing on this desk. Maybe you should just run along, because I certainly don't see anything here, and neither does my friend the trailer. <laughs> I only find comedy in my futility. If thus far you still somehow aren't sold on the G3 trailer, there's one more feature to show you, although if you aren't sold yet, you might not be sold with this one either. However, there's a cool little bonus, which is that you get a couple extra weapons in the trailer. And I thought that was a really cool little bonus touch, and was yet another step in making me feel that this thing was worth the fairly high asking price of around about 80 bucks from a lot of the retailers. So inside, there were stored in those metal frames some guns, namely a shoulder launcher for Mirage, a little hand pistol for Bumblebee. A gun for Hound that clips onto there more impressively than it looks when he's just holding it like a laser. A little shoulder rocket for Sideswipe. And finally, a terrifying damnation sword for Grimlock. These weapons turned out actually a little bit better than I expected. I thought I was going to just forget about them, but um, they fit really nicely with these guys. Now, they are chromed, and that would lead some, and many have actually come to this conclusion that they would look better with the Henke toys. I don't think they look that bad with the classics myself. And of course, if you want to arm these guys up even more and you happen to buy from more than one third-party company, then welcome to the G3 of war. Don't forget about me, guys! <laughs> Is the G3 trailer worth it, is the big question that I'm sure everyone has on their minds who's watching this. I'd say that it really depends on your expectations. Now, it costs around 80 bucks from most retailers. You do get $80 of value out of this set. 
Between the weapons, the stealth mode, the repair drone, the roller, the connections with Prime, and the overall build quality, as well as the quality of the spring-loaded gimmick and the mirrors in the stealth mode, despite being fingerprint magnets, this thing oozes with you paid for this and you got what you paid for. At least to me. However... Every feature that doesn't do it for you will impact how much you feel you're getting your money's worth. Now, if it's something minor, like how Prime mounts the gun drone thing here, or if it's something small like one of the weapons in the bonus accessories, or the Powered Commander trailer hitch, if those things don't do it for you, I'd say still consider picking this up, because those are really minor issues. However... If something like the stealth mode, or the overall aesthetics of the trailer itself don't do it for you, then you might want to reconsider picking it up. Speaking for myself though, when it comes to a high-priced third-party item like this, I look for very specific things. I want feature set, and I want build quality. I don't really care if I dig all the features, and in this case I generally dig a few of them, although the repair bay is a little bit boring, but it's also an homage, so you can't really blame it more so than the source material. But I also have to give massive props to this thing's build quality. It does not feel fragile in the least. The spring-loaded roller mechanism actually feels more solid than a lot of spring-loaded mechanisms on mainline toys. This is, of course, all in the case of my own copy of the G3 trailer, but hopefully it'll be indicative of what you'd get a hold of if you pick this up yourself. The stealth mode is a really creative idea, and in my opinion, it worked out really nicely considering real-world physics. The only downside being the fingerprint magnet of the mirror panels. However, hopefully they'll be easy to wipe off and won't scratch over time. Really, the G3 trailer feels like a nice end cap to the Classics Prime mold upgrade scheme. The fit and finish of the product, right down to the incredible detail and quality of its own packaging makes it feel like a nice epilogue to this whole chapter of fans projects releases so i've got to give the g3 trailer really high marks but if you want something simple something inexpensive and too many of the g3's qualities don't work for you then perhaps you'll want to look elsewhere but i've really got to give it a high recommendation and i'm very pleased to have gotten a hold of it after all this time and hype and seeing pictures of stuff so I'm really happy to have this as part of my collection. Anyway, this has been Internet Personality Evangelist. I hope this review was helpful to you in some way. And I really look forward to future fans' projects' releases, because, you know, as I said, we saw a whole lot of this before it came out. The quality of the product made the wait worthwhile, and I'm really hoping that's the case with the currently hyped protector armor for Rodimus. Hoping that comes out sometime soon. Anytime now. Anytime. My Rodimus is so naked.